Hello and welcome to your program Hyperlink. This is where we all get together and answer your questions on a variety of teenage topics that affect both you and your parents. Today's episode is answering questions from your parents and to your parents. So if they are around, ask them to join you now. Today, however, we will discuss together the issue of problems of teenagers. Let's see what the youth and their parents think about teenage problems. A very common mistake uh, we always do with our uh, young adults uh, that we have no communication whatsoever. Number two, we never ever give them a chance to be uh, some leaders and give them uh, like a room and time and a chance to uh, to communicate with us. So please, communication, communication, communication. Thank you for your participations and your personal opinions. Teenagers, the young people between the ages of 13 and 20, every teenager has problems. There is no doubt about it. As parents say, problems plays an important part in a teenager's life as they see if you can handle it well. What happens if they can't defeat their problem? What happens if the problem is about drugs? Or maybe they're really depressed. I mean, lots of teenagers smoke and drink. There are problems that parents don't want to hear about at all. Who would want to? Let's see. Some problems are drugs, alcohol, depression, abuse, peer pressure, smoking, puberty, and these are just the most common ones. How does the problem affect teenagers more than the other people? Teenagers are more emotional than their elders and younger ones. Life is that way. Everywhere teenagers are, in the floods from being dumped, having nervous breakdowns and stressing for exams, being ignored by getting bullied, being sent hate mails, falling in love. The list can go on forever and still not cover every problem. Let's go and answer the first question. I have three teenagers who are wonderful kids, but when they get together, they cause a lot of mischief, which upsets me and their father. I have tried many different ways to resolve this, but nothing has worked. Will you help me? The teenage years are troubled with all kinds of problems, from low self-esteem and peer pressure to low motivation and chronic untidiness. With a bit of foresight, you can help your teen with all of these. Let's take a look at some issues. Self-esteem. Part of being an adolescent is the excruciating concern of appearance. Their body shape is changing, so no wonder teenagers spend so much time looking in the mirror. If a young person is less than delighted with the changes they see, and every few are completely happy, and very few, sorry, and very few are completely happy, it can knock their self-esteem down. Parents should try to avoid making jokes about a teenager's appearance, even if it's meant in a light-hearted way. It can be taken to heart. It's also a mistake to make light of something that worries a teenager, even though it may seem silly to you. He may be convinced that plastic surgery is the only solution for his nose, even though it looks absolutely fine to everyone else. Try to explain that other people rarely notice the kind of detail we notice in ourselves. If your teenager has bad acne, your GP can prescribe medication to help clear it up. The better teenagers feel generally about themselves and the higher their self-esteem, the more able they are to cope with these temporary problems. Another point is helping around the house. Ideally, your child should have become used 
to helping with some household chores in middle childhood, so there's less likelihood of a battle in adolescence. Even so, the nature of being a teenager means they're likely to try to get out of doing things and certainly won't respond well to orders. The more you can negotiate the type of chores that your teen might not mind doing, the better. He may be happy to do some weeding in the garden, for example, but hate the idea of washing dishes. It also works better if your teenager can, at least to some extent, do things in his own way and time. This might seem annoying, but if all you do is order him to do things now and in a particular way, you can bet next time he'll make sure he's out of the way and doesn't do it at all. Always thank your child for his effort. And if he does something that's well beyond regular chores, decorating perhaps, you might want to pay him. Another point is untidiness. Among the most common arguments between parents and teenagers are those regarding untidiness. Parents are driven mad by the school blazer dropped on the hall floor, the wet towel dripping next to the bath, or the mold growing in a weak old coffee cup. But before flying off the handle, it's worth remembering your own teens. Chances are tidiness wasn't your number one priority in life either. Teenagers don't really do it to annoy parents. Their thoughtlessness is simply a reflection of the fact that their thoughts are elsewhere most of the time. Different parents deal with the aspect of a teen's behavior in different ways. Some don't mind clearing up after their teens, seeing it as an extension of the childcare they've been happily doing all along. Others are determined to make the young person toe the line and take more responsibility for themselves. Whatever the rights or wrongs of each stance, there's no doubt that the first kind of parent will have less arguments and less hassle. If you're determined to teach your teenager to be tidy, the best way may be to let them experience the natural consequences. They'll quickly realize that their things can't be found in a muddle or that the clothes don't walk to the washing machine on their own. Unfortunately, they may not thank you sweetly for the lesson and vow to change their ways. In fact, they are more likely to fly into a rage and blame you. There's another important issue when it comes to the teenager's own room, which is as much to do with boundaries as it is with cleanliness. The wisest course of action with the least chance of upset is to accept that your child's room is his or her own private space, and he or she have the right to keep it as he or she likes. As long as the door is closed, don't fuss over it. If the example set in the rest of the house is be clean and tidy, then he'll probably decide to clean up his own room every now and then too. Let's go to our next question. There are many ways we can bring up our teens and have a good and fruitful relationship with them. Will you please tell me some pointers on how to be a better parent when dealing with my teens? Sure, let's take a look at some key points in dealing with your youth for a better relationship. First of all, make sure that you open a dialogue with your teen. You can start by explaining that all teenagers worry about how they look and that few, if any, are completely satisfied. You could talk about how worried you were as a teen about your spots and how they're obviously not a problem at all now. Another thing you can do is continue to give compliments about your teenager's appearance. It's tempting to say you look a complete state in that, but hold back. Remember, 
your grandmother's advice. If you haven't got anything to say nicely, keep quiet. Guard against labeling teenagers. Phrases such as, you never, you never do as I ask, or you're always getting on my nerves, can make your young feel as if it's not worth trying. Part of being an adolescent means wanting to challenge the ideas of parents. Many teenagers seem ready to pick up arguments and get into rows over things they know parents have strong views about. Because of their relative immaturity, they may be completely irrational. That's important that you don't always fall into the trap of using this opportunity to put your teenager down by showing your superior knowledge or debating skills. Smart parents refuse to raise to their bait. Do all you can to keep communication open. Respect your child's ideas and show that feelings can be expressed without them leading to arguments. Never, never show your teenager up in front of his friends with remarks such as I told you to tidy that room or surely you're not wearing that. Introduce your teenager to a variety of pursuits, such as trips to the theatre, art galleries, football matches and dance classes, so he sees there's a wide choice of activities and interests in life. Make it clear you're interested in hearing about his school, friends or hobbies. If you don't do this, you can't complain when he doesn't tell you anything. So change your ways as a parent to deal with your teen in a more meaningful and loving way. Let's go on to our next question. My next door neighbor's son is very rude to his parents. They don't know what to do. Do you have any suggestions? Thanks. Teenagers often get away with outrageous and antisocial behavior because it's believed to be hormonal and a natural part of adolescence. But what can you do when you find yourself wondering where your once cheerful, sweet-natured child has gone? There's evidence to suggest that temper, tantrums, other emotional outbursts and grunts and groans aren't a natural part of adolescence, but are actually an uh, accentuation of a young person's personality. If your child had temper tantrums before puberty, they're likely to get worse during adolescence. If he didn't, they won't necessarily develop now. Where's it all coming from? If your child is being rude, you need to know why before deciding what to do about it. It could be that he's trying to shock you, or it could be his way of asserting himself as a separate from you as a sign of independence. It could be that he can't control himself and may have a flood of confusing emotions. When he's with his friends, swearing and being rude and lippy, maybe part of the way they relate to one another. He may have just forgotten that to change his behavior once home. Where is it all coming from? If your child is being rude, you need to know why before deciding what to do about it. It could be that he's trying to shock you, or it could be his way of asserting himself as a separate form as you a sign of independence. It could be that he can't control himself and maybe have a flood of confusing emotions. When he's with his friends, swearing and being rude and lippy, maybe part of the way they relate to one another. He may have just forgotten to change his behavior once home. Or it could be that your teen is following your example. A hasty response from you, especially if his rudeness is out of character, can compound the problem. Don't take it so seriously and try to find out what the behavior is a symptom of. It could be that he's upset with you over a misunderstanding whose origins lie elsewhere. So how do you deal with rudeness? Don't ignore, sorry, 
Don't ignore the behavior. If being rude is something that's always been a part of your child's personality and has got worse as he's grown up, you need to deal with it. Talk with your child. Try to get to the root of his behavior. Find someone your child trusts. If he won't open up to you in regard to his behavior, then look elsewhere. He may be more willing to talk to a family friend, an older sibling or an aunt or uncle. If all else fails, you may feel you need to seek professional help. Remember, however, if you choose this option, you may well have to look at your own behavior too. Let's move on to the next question. I am a mother who is concerned with the upbringing of my soon-to-be teenagers and I am afraid of dealing with them at this age when they come to it. How can I prepare myself for this change and what are the precautions I should take? Teens often get a bad press and it's chiefly misdemeanors and wild behavior that are the focus of parents' attention. But by focusing on the bad, you could be missing out on all the good. They're not that bad. It depends on how you view them and put them into which category. Much of the behavior associated with adolescents wanting more freedom, challenging authority and taking risks actually starts much earlier in some young people. In others, it starts later, even in their 20s. And for a few and their fortunate parents, it never happens at all. Such typical teenage behavior, such as trying alcohol or drugs, having relationships and staying out late are only part of the picture. Research shows that many of the negative stereotypes attached to adolescents, such as delinquency and violence, are also quite incorrect. A few teenagers may behave in this way, but the vast majority doesn't. Going through changes. As your teen matures towards adulthood, he may have to tackle some of the following. Dealing with sexual feelings and his newly maturing body. He's caught between a childhood and adulthood. Another point is learning new life skills. Problem solving, decision making, negotiation and conflict resolution, as well as learning to apply a more abstract level of thought. Another point is working out a system of values and morals based on, but probably different from, your own. Dealing with friendships and boy and girl relationships in a mature way. Another point is working out his adult identity, including a likely period of adopting different identities to see if they fit and forming a new adult relationship with you that will be the basis of your future together. All the way through the teen years, you'll have to guide your child towards adult life, gradually handing over responsibilities and independence when he or she shows he or she can manage them in a mature way. Your teen will need clear rules and boundaries about what's considered acceptable, even when he rebels against them. So what's good about teenagers? Once your child becomes a teenager, you'll find you have an interesting companion to chat to and share ideas with. You may even discover a new zest for life from the enthusiasm and energy of your teenager. All that optimism can be infectious. Wise parents learn to respect their children as the adults they'll soon become, while still understanding that they may sometimes want to behave in a younger way. This can be puzzling, but just as the toddler years, your teen is torn between going all out for independence and swinging back to the familiar security of an earlier age. During stressful times, it can all be too easy to forget that inside your argumentative teenager is your tender child. Adolescence identity. Throughout his teens, your child is developing 
his identity. You may find he suffers a lack of confidence and worries about his looks, body and the strange feeling and thoughts he is experiencing. This is why teenagers often retreat to their rooms or spend hours in the bathroom. Remember, he's sorting things out for himself, not rejecting you. For him, growing up involves demonstrating how different he is from the adults around him. He needs to find ways of expressing this difference. He may disagree with everything you say. Let's go on to our next question. What does the Bible say about teen behavior? Christian teens hear a lot about godly behavior, but often wonder what that actually means. As Christians, we are asked to live to a higher stand because we are representatives of God on earth. So, striving to live a God-centered life is important because when we exhibit godly behavior, we are providing a good witness to those around us. God expects Christian teens to live by a higher standard. This means that God wants us to be examples of Christ rather than living by the world's standards. Reading your Bible, praying, having weekly Holy Communion, attending youth meetings and doing regular devotions are helpful ways to know God's expectations and live a life focused on God. Book of Romans 13.13 13 says, Let us walk properly, as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. And Ephesians 5.8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Remember your age is not an excuse for bad behavior. One of the greatest witnesses to non-believers is the Christian teen setting a godly example. Unfortunately, most people have little faith that teens can make good decisions, so Christian teens exemplifying godly behavior are a powerful representation of God's love. Romans 12 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Make sure that you live out godly behavior in everyday life. Taking time to ask how your behavior and appearance are perceived by others is an important part of being a Christian. Everything a Christian teen does influences what people think of Christians and God. You are a representative of God and your behavior is part of demonstrating your relationship with Him. Does this mean you will be perfect? No. We all make mistakes and sin. However, it is important to keep striving to walk in Jesus' footsteps as best as we can. In Matthew 5.16, it says, In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. 1 Peter 2.12 says, Live such good lives among the pagans that, though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. So let's go and see our story for today's subject. Honoring parents. I fight with my mum all the time. If it's not about this, it's about that. And if it's not about that, it's about the other. People say we fight because we're alike and hearing that scares me. I had such a hard time growing up as battles between my mum and me escalated into World War III almost daily, especially when I was in high school. I knew there was no way I'd survive if someone didn't change, and in my heart I doubted it would be my mum. The saying goes that you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and I was a younger dog, so I figured I'd have to be the one to change. But me change? Ha! Huh. I'm perfect, or so I thought. So to do this, and to really do it right, I had to dig deep, way deep. God tells us to honor thy father and thy mother, and through all of those 
tumultuous years, I wasn't honoring my mum. I even thought she was a bit crazy. I began to pray, mostly because I didn't know what else to do, but also because a part of me knew that the only answer to the problem was in God. So I decided, or rather God helped me to see, that I had to honor my mother. With honor, love is not automatic by any means. In fact, it isn't even required. But as I began to honor my mum, my love for her felt renewed. Also, honoring my mum brought me a great deal of peace, and not only in the sense of no war, but also in the sense of tranquility. I think this feeling comes from God's forgiveness. When I finally looked to him for guidance, I realized that I needed to ask his forgiveness for disrespecting my mum. For so long, I thought it would always be a war with my mum, but God taught me otherwise. Believe me, there are still days when honoring my mother is the last thing on my mind. But even then, I remember the peace that God granted me through his forgiveness, and I am able to try just a little bit harder to be the daughter he wants me to be. So this ends our episode for today on teen problems. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and we are looking forward to meeting you in our next episode. God bless you and stay safe. Mm-hmm.